Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Ethereum and the summer lull. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Remember to check out the premium list if you wanna know how I am navigating these markets. You can find a link to that in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. So with Ethereum, if you remember, we discuss the idea of a summer lull. And, and again, not based on Ben's opinion, not based on how I felt that day, what side of the bed I woke up on that morning, but based on what? The data. Based on the data that we would get a summer lull in the market. We've often seen uh, these things play out for Ethereum where especially even against Bitcoin, you'll see these sort of local tops against the Bitcoin valuation. This one was in May, this one was in Jan, or, sorry, this one was in May. This one was in June. Um, here was another one that was in May. And we've seen this play out many times. And you couple that with the fact that Ethereum did a crazy move against Bitcoin in January, February, March, April, and April, and in going into May. And we said, you know, based on historical data, based on the average 90-day ROI of Ethereum, discretized by month and averaged out over the last six or seven years, we said, hey guys, it seems likely seems likely that we'll at least get a summer lull okay and with bitcoin we said hey look three to six months probably of consolidation um, at the very least we're not looking at a v-shaped recovery or anything like that and if we're not getting a v-shaped recovery for bitcoin well what does that mean what does it mean if you're not going to get a v-shaped recovery for bitcoin well it means it's going to drag down the rest of the market okay so when, when Bitcoin here, you see it broke the 20-week SMA back in May um, of, of 2021, and now it looks like Ethereum's breaking it about a month and a half later, which again is very similar to Ethereum breaking it in March back in 2018, but Bitcoin breaking it in January. So about a month and a half or so difference there. So when it comes to Ethereum, uh, we've always maintained that the move to say a theoretical $10,000 Ethereum. I don't know if it's going to make it $10,000 or not this market cycle, but it might. But the move there would probably not come in the most recent move. So we did a video showing why that was, that it likely would not go to 10K. But what we what we will likely see, um, similar similar to Bitcoin, as we've discussed, is some level of consolidation. And, and I, I think getting a summer lull in the market makes a lot of sense. That doesn't necessarily mean that the lull is going to end at the very end of the summer. But what what did we say that June, July, August, you're, you're looking at 90 day ROIs that don't tend to be that great, meaning that, you know, you're buying if you're buying Ethereum in June, July and August, uh, the, the 90 day ROI on that going out till September, October, November, just doesn't tend to be that great. When you discretize it monthly over the last, you know, seven, six or seven years. So six years or so, because Ethereum's only been around since 2015. So that's where we are today. Okay, now we'll have to see how the rest of, you know, of the summer plays out. If we get some type of major bleed against Bitcoin over the next few months, then we'll have to be looking at, well, how does the, the second half of the year shape up? Okay, because if you go look at, at the Ethereum Bitcoin valuation, you know, when it when it had sort of a local top here in June, it didn't turn around sustainably until December. And this didn't turn sustainably around until December. I mean, we had a little bit of a playing in the sandbox moment where we're like, all right, schedule the Forbes interview. Just kidding. We ultimately came back down. And then in, in May of 2016, again, we had a sort of a fake out in September, but we really didn't see a sustained move back up to new all time highs over here until until the next year so what i'm what i'm looking at with ethereum is is generally we know that if bitcoin's just chilling below the 20 week sma it's not looking great i mean it's just uh it's just the data right i mean I, some people get offended i think when i when i say these things but you know i don't take it up with me right take it up with the data um and and so i would say i would say generally speaking with ethereum what i'm looking for is in order for it to even have a remote possibility of putting in a new all-time high, Bitcoin, I think, needs to be above the 20-week. And, and you could argue that the, the, the likelihood that Ethereum puts in a new all-time high before Bitcoin is really relatively low, okay? Doesn't mean it can't happen. It certainly doesn't mean it can't happen. 
But when you're talking about what's going to put it a new all-time high first, I would probably lean towards Bitcoin. Honestly, I'd probably lean towards Bitcoin putting in a new all-time high before Ethereum. Now, with that said, I would love to be proven wrong. Okay, I would love to be proven wrong. I think some people think that I, you know, I take these little these little YouTube predictions to the bank and and whatnot. But I, I would say that I think it's more likely than not that Bitcoin puts in a new all-time high before Ethereum does. It's kind of similar to when Bitcoin broke through 20k. You know, Bitcoin put in that all-time high before Ethereum broke through 1400. I think a similar thing could play out where Bitcoin breaks through 64, 65K before Ethereum goes above $4,400. That's generally how I see the market. Um, that's generally how, how the market works. You know, you, you're not going to, you're generally just not going to see crazy breakouts until there's a little bit more confidence in the market. And with Bitcoin below the 20 week SMA and having these, these shakeouts, the confidence just isn't there right now. Okay. The confidence just isn't there right, right now. And there's also a lot of times where so I always like look above now because I have these like windows. Um, but uh, but now, now we have to be patient, I think. Okay, remember, I think we're in a lengthen cycle. And even if you look at the last cycle, there was period, there were periods where we didn't do anything for a year. I mean, look at this. I mean, look, I mean, this was this was about a year where Ethereum didn't really do anything. Now, everyone looks back and remembers 2016 to 2017 is a crazy time for Ethereum. I mean, if you put in a thousand dollars into Ethereum in like October of 2015, it would have been worth several million dollars by January 2018. With that said, there was still a period of a year where it didn't do anything. I mean, look at this. The price of Ethereum hit around 15, 14, 15 dollars Sorry if that's painful to hear. $14, $15 in February of 2016. By February, by February 2017, it still was around the same price. So we know that we can have these long consolidations in the market that don't necessarily put in new all-time highs for a while. And even in this case, we actually went below the 20-week SMA for a while. Okay, I mean, you can look at it. Um, if if you if you look at the this this region right here, Ethereum actually went below the twenty week SMA for for a few months. So th this is why we've been saying you know it, seeing Bitcoin go below the twenty week SMA can sometimes be a precursor to then watching Ethereum do it. If Bitcoin is unable to put in a V shaped recovery, and we speculated that Bitcoin will likely not be able to put in a V shaped recovery, and if Bitcoin can't put in a V shaped recovery, then that means it's, it's sort of just playing in the sandbox below the 20 week SMA. And if it's playing in the sandbox below the 20 week SMA, then you're gonna get these like fake pumps followed by these, you know, these just insistent dumps. And every single move back to the downside can hammer altcoins hard, can hammer Ethereum hard. So again, I know there's the whole. Okay, Ethereum is going to get an upgrade and whatnot, but again, I, I don't think that it, it it matters in the sense of the price. Okay, remember, I mean, Ethereum was like less than a hundred dollars like 15, 16 months ago. So the fact that it's trading at around two thousand dollars, just you know, a year, not even a year and a half later, is already relatively impressive. So the idea that every every upgrade has to immediately improve the price in a sustained manner is likely not true okay it's likely not true now that doesn't mean that it the long-term effects won't won't make things better it probably will but I, I just don't think when you're when you're, when you're dealing with a very speculative market and, and where prices are driven by fomo and these crazy bubbles I people are buying people are not necessarily just buying an upgrade the idea of the upgrade they're just they're they're following this this long-term adoption of ethereum and what Ethereum is going to be used for, not necessarily pricing in or, or trying to figure out like, you know, at what price exactly is, is Ethereum going to go to because of, because of an upgrade. So again, upgrades are great. We need them, but I don't think they're going to ultimately lead to all time highs. And I've been saying this for a while. We showed that this most recent run for Ethereum was very unlikely to make it to $10,000 based off sub market cycle ROIs from the prior cycle. We broke it up into three different cycles. Maybe we'll do an update on that video. So then We'll start the new sub cycle whenever we can find a bottom. But I mean, again, to some degree, if you're, you know, it's like trying to catch a falling knife, as they say. If Bitcoin goes down, DM's going to keep getting hammered. That's just the way it is. Okay, I don't control the way it is. I don't. I don't. I just. I just want you guys to know the way it is. That if Bitcoin continues to to pull back, 
then you're going to continue to see this type of price action from from Ethereum. So we'll keep an eye on Ethereum. You know, we, we were in this sort of uptrend channel since you could argue since July of 2019. And we've recently moved above it. We're still above it, in fact. Okay, so for us to get back into it, we would need to be breaking below 0 0.06. And if we're breaking below, say, uh, maybe like 0 0.058 or something, then we're back in our general uptrend channel. But even if we are, we're still in the same course we've always been on. I'm still very bullish on Ethereum. I just also recognize that when, when we're below the 20 week, when Bitcoin's below the 20 week, it makes it a little bit more difficult for the price of Ethereum to, to gain traction. Remember this market, it might seem like the market can turn on a dime in the sense of prices can go up. I mean, price, the price of Ethereum could be $3,000 in a week or two, uh, for all we know. But in order to get a sustained move back up to the upside, you need more than that, right? You need Bitcoin consistently being healthy above the 20 week, holding the 20 week as support. These things take time. They don't just happen overnight. And so I think, I think we, you know, we talked about the idea of a summer lull. I think we're getting it, right? I think we're getting the summer lull. I think it's playing out as the data suggested that it would, not as I suggested, right? As the data suggested that it would. And and we just need to we need to hang tight for a bit and and wait for Bitcoin to to get to more bullish wallet waters because right now it's simply just not. I mean, you know, I, I know some people get offended when we say things look bearish for Bitcoin. When you're getting weekly closes below the 20 week, that's just what it is. Okay. I mean, maybe it'll change in a couple months, but right now, right now the price is still continue to look somewhat bearish. Okay, we're, we're below the 20 week SMA, we're 50% down from the prior all time high. Until that changes, all coins are gonna get hammered over and over and over, okay? So if you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Remember to check out the premium list if you wanna know how I'm navigating these markets. Thank you guys for tuning in, definitely subscribe, and I will see you next time, bye.